Hey, what's up guys? It's M and welcome to the channel. Here we talk anything art related, a lot of stuff. And I have a Twitch dedicated series that I do where we talk anything that has to do with art, specifically on Twitch. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then hit that subscribe button, stick around, see if you like anything. And today's video is exciting because we are talking animated emotes. Now, currently animated emotes have only been made available to most partners, but they're slowly rolling it out to Twitch affiliates. So I'm thinking that there's going to be a big need for animated emotes very soon. So if you are either interested in making your own animated emotes for your own channel or you do commission art for other people and you just need to do the little transition from making normal emotes to animated emotes, I really hope that this video will be helpful for you. And if it is helpful, then please hit that like button so that I know that you enjoy the content and it inspires me to make more, you know? But anyway, let's get into the video. So for today's video, I am working on a 360 by 360 canvas. And this is normally the size I use for doing normal emotes as well, seeing as they are a very small size on Twitch, even smaller than that. And we are going to be using a friend of mine's emote that I did for his channel. And I just imported it into the program. But the problem is every single part that I want to have animated, I need to have on a different layer. So what I did was basically trace off this emote because I don't have it in separate layers anymore. Whereas if you just drew the emote from scratch, you would have your elements in different layers. So I'm just focusing on which elements I want as separate layers. In this specific emote, I am focusing on making the little guy look like he's crying. So the tears will be all different layers. Now, the most important part comes in where you need to open the timeline. I zoomed in a little bit to show you, and I hope that that translates. I just name my timeline anything I want and I'm sticking to the settings that are given to me and you'll see that it gives you 24 frames to work with. Then I need to start making new layers. Now this goes very quickly and you'll see that it doesn't only come up in the tab at the bottom but also that a new folder is made on your layers tab to the right side and every single frame that you make because we're working with frames also then shows up. Now I have a little cheat that I do when working with this and it might be a long way to do it or it might be a short way to do it. I found that this was the easiest for me to make sure my changes are right and not go and draw every single layer as you would when you do an animation. So what I do is I select all of those frames and I drag them out of the folder and then I will duplicate. I'm working with the long tears down the cheek at the moment. I will duplicate that specific layer 24 times and then make sure that I drag each of those above the frames. Now the frames are very nicely named. They're from one to 24. So you can kind of keep track of which ones are the duplicates from your art and which ones are frames because the duplicates from your art will have some weird like in this case mine's called cry b 360 copy 25 so it's a very long title and your frames are just numbers now it's very important that you have your duplicate of the art layer above your frame rate when you merge down if you do it the other way around it doesn't merge onto the frame that you want and it doesn't work so you need to make sure that you put the art above the frame and then merge it down and then what i do is i select all 24 frames again and i drag it in to the folder so then you will see that it shows up on the timeline at the bottom so this is where i now will go in and change the art a little bit every frame to give the illusion that it's moving in this case i sort of having the reflection of water kind of slowly move down the cheeks and down the water from the tears and you'll see me just kind of use a soft brush and do a little line every few millimeters from the previous one. And I just continue doing this for 24 frames. I actually think that with this one, I did it from the top to the bottom in 12 frames. 
and then repeated it in the next 12 frames. It's also important when you do animated emotes to think about how impactful everything is that you do because it's such a small size when you are in a Twitch chat that if you do something that's very detailed and small that might look great on your big screen while you're working with it, it's not necessarily going to show up the same way in the chat. So whatever I do, I make sure isn't too detailed. It's not very intricate. So you'll see that the white line that I'm making is just, it's very simple. There's nothing intense about this. And then what I like to do when I've gone through every frame is to play it through just to see how it runs and it will continuously run until you press stop. So it gives you a good amount of time to just sit and watch it and see, you know, if it's actually doing what you want it to do and then make changes. I just went in afterwards and softened it out even more. And I felt like that kept the impact, but it looked more in tune with the lower layer that it's been done on. Running it through, I feel happy. So I closed the folder and now we make a new folder with new frames in it. This time I'm actually not working with 24 frames, but I'm working with half the amount because I'm now going to work on the individual tiers on the side and I do want to alternate how many movements there are in each tier so it doesn't seem very generic. So as my steps go, you need to drag your frame out of the folder to your art layer and then merge the art layer down onto the frame layer and this will then give you the art on your frame and then you can drag it back into the folder. Now what is nice of this is I'm gonna animate this tier to not only move but also change in size and with the timeline that you don't get with other layers unless you change the opacity I have an onion layer so I can see the green outline of the next layer and the blue outline of the previous layer so it gives me a good idea of if my movement is going to look organic so I just kind of go through that see if I can get it to make little bits of movement in the 12 frames that I chose to work with. And then as soon as I've done all 12 of the frames, I will play it through to see if it works. And I like the kind of comic-y feel of this tier. I don't think it matters. And what I did now was I made another tier for the left side. This time I also used 12 frames. So I pulled the frames out of the folder. I merged the duplicate art layers onto the frames. And then I pulled the frames back into the folder. And then this allows me again to change the size, see the onion layers. So green is for the next layer. So you'll see that it's bigger and blue is for the previous layer so, or the previous frame. And that is a little bit smaller. So you don't always see it as clearly, but you can kind of, if you move it to the side, see where it's placed. And then you can place your tears according to that. Now I do have to say animating elements, the more elements that you need to animate, the more time consuming it does get. I also animate in Adobe After Effects. It depends on what the movement is and I felt more comfortable animating in Clip Studio because of the amount of movement that I wanted to put in but if you guys are interested in seeing an animated emote done on After Effects please let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in because it's a little bit different than maybe a little bit easier seeing as Adobe has a bunch of shortcuts that you can use you know Adobe is just set out so if you do have the Adobe programs you don't necessarily want to download something that you don't necessarily use like you draw your emotes in photoshop and you do everything adobe then i wouldn't necessarily suggest that you download clip studio but you know sometimes you need to branch out don't knock something till you try it and i really loved clip studio ever since i started using it so i really can't say anything bad about it in the video now there is the third tier that i am animating and it's basically the same thing it's you know, you make your frames the amount that you want. I actually this time went with every third frame. So I only have eight frames to just make the movement be different on all fronts of the emote and not have it repeat. Because sometimes when you do everything 12 frames, then it looks very um, just forced. Whereas if you play around a little bit with the speeds, then you might find it looks great. And then I get to the last tier that I want to animate and that's adding a bottom tier on the right hand side 
and I literally do exactly the same thing. So you make your frames, you pull them out the folder, you duplicate your art, you merge them down onto the frames and you pull your frames back into the folder. I feel like I might also do a blog post about this on my website just to have screenshots added and just step by step maybe. I feel like sometimes some information can get lost in a video and sometimes, you know, it's better than reading a blog post. So if I do end up writing a blog post about this, I will link it down in the description when it's done. So when I feel like I'm happy, it's time to export. So I just go file, export, and then you need to export as an animated GIF and in the preferred size that you want. Just a reminder, in Clip Studio, when you do export as an animated GIF, it will export with a background. You cannot export it with a transparent background, but I have a fix for that. So if you want to know that fix, you can watch that video on my channel. I promise it's helpful. Even for other places where you maybe are exporting a GIF without a transparent background, that video will definitely help you. So. Yeah, I hope that this video was helpful. I think it was a quick one and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.